Hi, and welcome back. So the YouTube video that's titled Failed Longevity Drugs Within the ITP that was produced by the YouTube channel Peter Atia MD is 10 minutes and 43 seconds in duration. Let's break that down and just look at the key points. In this video, Peter Atia and Rich Miller discuss two supplements and one drug that have been tested for their potential anti-aging effects, but to date have shown no success. First is resveratrol. This was hyped, they say, for many years, often by people with commercial interests or seeking funding for their clinical trials. Also staying with trials, some biochemists have questioned the amount of resveratrol they need in their trials to have any kind of effect. Original data on resveratrol and its effects on worms has now been disconfirmed. They say in a study, mice fed a 60% coconut oil diet with resveratrol had swollen livers that pressed on their lungs and then they died. The ubiquity of resveratrol supplements on the internet is constantly criticized during the video due to weak evidence of effectiveness. A neurologist conducted a study on resveratrol and Alzheimer's patients, but further details in the video were not provided. The only studies that appear to have been conducted were by David Sinclair, where dosing every other day did show longevity benefits in mice. Maybe the ITP could repeat those specific studies. The Interventions Testing Program, the ITP, is a research program funded by the National Institute on Aging in the United States. The primary goal of the ITP is to investigate various molecules that have the potential to extend lifespan and improve health in later life. The main objective of the ITP is to identify interventions that can delay aging and age-related diseases in mammals, primarily focusing on mice as the model organism. By doing so, the program aims to find ways to improve the health and the longevity of humans. So everything they talk about in this video is mouse related, which I think could have been either be part of the thumbnail or even the title. The second molecule they talk about is metformin. And all they really say is that the benefits with regard to longevity uh, and the side effects are not really that well known yet. There is plausibility in potential benefits, although claims are not completely proven. My comment here is that metformin does control A1C levels. There is no question about that. And the average worldwide death rate from diabetes related conditions and diabetes is between three and four million a year. Unfortunately, many doctors will only prescribe metformin when you actually have diabetes and will not entertain it at all as a preventative. And if you follow the channel for any, any time, you'll know that when I was in the UAE, uh, even though I had very high A1C levels knocking on the door of diabetes, definitely in the pre-diabetic range. Um, no doctors would entertain giving me or prescribing metformin um, at all. I did manage to get one to do it. And even though the minimum dose is 500, she told me to cut a tablet in half and only take 250 milligrams. So that really didn't do that much. So would this death rate of between three and four million people a year change if doctors prescribe metformin when people moved into the pre-diabetic range. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I agree, there is no evidence it will help you if you have normal blood sugar levels. Then they move on to nicotinamide riboside. The reasons for failure here was that it did not extend mouse lifespan. There is some skepticism about the effectiveness and they say commercial sources are very expensive. The potential for its positive effects they say is still open, but at present are not confirmed. Although Rich Miller did say that for the whole nicotinamide modulating family, the book is still open and that positive results could be forthcoming. He says they are looking into testing NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, with another molecule, although he did not elaborate any further on what that other molecule was. The video also discusses the challenge in translating results from mice to humans and the complexities involved in drug testing for anti-aging. It highlights the importance of human testing to determine the actual effectiveness of these drugs and supplements. Now, during the video, they both emphasize that while there are reasons to doubt the effectiveness of certain drugs, there is still a case to be made for the potential use in humans. They also mention the possibility of some drugs working better when in combination with others. I also found this comment somewhat interesting in that it does balance out somewhat the clickbaity title and also the thumbnail. 
The fact that something fails in mice doesn't mean it's going to fail in people. Testing it in people is going to be much harder. It's easier to sell stuff that's untested, but in principle, one could actually test it in people and see if it does anything good. Well, I hope you found that interesting, more informative, hopefully both. Let me know what you thought of my condensed just the facts type summary. And if you'd like me to cover another longevity related video that to you looks like it's good, but also looks like it might be too long, let me know the title of that video in the comment section below.